Hello, my name is Nicholas, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make a foam padded plywood shield, similar to the ones that you see here. I'll talk about the materials, the tools required, the process of how to actually complete the shield, and give a quick review of their performance and maintenance. First up, we'll talk about the tools and materials you'll need. The first thing you'll need to find is an appropriately sized piece of plywood, somewhere between 7 and 12 millimeters thick. For light contact fighting with foam weapons, 7mm is sufficient for small to medium sized shields, but with heavier weapons or harder fighting styles, 12mm is recommended. The next thing you'll need to find is either a round or rectangular piece of wood that will be used as your handle. A round handle should comfortably fit your grip with whatever glove or gauntlet that you use when fighting, whereas a rectangular handle can be slightly larger and then shaped down into a circular grip section in the middle. If making a center grip shield, one of the most important things you'll need to find is an appropriate shield boss. While you can get specifically made shield bosses, it's much cheaper to find cooking bowls or pet food bowls. These can usually be found for 2 to 5 dollars in variety shops, although it may take some searching to get ones just the right size. You need to make sure that your hand can comfortably fit within the bowl, again including any glove or gauntlet that you use when fighting. And you need to make sure that the bowl has a lip around the edge. This lip is what holds the bowl in place when the shield's finished. The bowl should ideally also be as round as possible, as flat surfaces are much easier to dent. For edging your shield, you will need a section of garden hose long enough to cover the circumference of your shield. You will also need some pipe insulation foam to cover the hose. Ideally, the pipe should be just large enough to fit over the hose when on the shield edge, and the foam itself should be at least 14mm thick when uncompressed. To finish your shield's edge, you'll need some form of cloth, canvas, denim or fake fur to cover the pipe foam. Apart from those main materials, you'll also need to make sure you have paint, stencils, clear coat and sealant for the shield face, string or cloth to use as a handle wrapping, as well as screws to attach the handle to the shield face. You'll also need some contact glue or contact adhesive for attaching the shield's edging, and we use staples to secure the cloth. As far as tools go, you'll need some sort of woodcutting tool. We used a jigsaw with a blade that could be angled. You'll see why that's important as you go. Uh, we also needed a drill in order to drill holes through the handle and the shield face. You'll need a screwdriver for attaching the handle, some sort of brush for your glue and contact adhesive. You'll also need scissors or garden shears, which are surprisingly effective at slicing open garden hose. As I mentioned earlier, we used a staple gun for attaching the cloth over the edge. You'll also need a handsaw and a chisel and a soft hammer, depending on how you do your handles. Once your tools and materials are gathered, you can actually begin making the shield. I find that this breaks down into roughly six different steps, first of which is making the shield face, followed by painting, after that comes making the handle, followed by assembling the handle, the shield face and the shield boss together into a usable item. After that you attach the edging to make sure it's safe to use against foam weapons, and then finally any finishing touches such as handle bindings. To make your shield face, first draw up and mark your shield on your plywood. I have found it easiest to create a square, draw a line from each corner of the square to the opposite corner to find the center, and then utilize a piece of string to draw a perfectly round circle. Then using the jig, cut out the circle to give you your shield face. The process we'll be using for this video can be used for round shields of all sizes, from the smallest buckler up to a fairly large viking style round shield. Once your shield's face is cut out, drill a hole near the centre of the shield, in line with where the boss will go. This will allow you to fit the jigsaw's cutting blade into the inner circle, and allow you to remove a central hole for the shield boss. Angling the jig will create a tapered hole which, if it matches the tapering on the shield boss itself, will allow the boss to fit very snugly within the wood and prevent it from moving around during use. Once the shield face has been cut, it can be painted and then clear coated or sealed to protect it from the elements and from wear and tear. To create your handle, first take your piece of wood and cut it to length, measuring it against your shield. Then mark where the central hole lines up with the handle for future reference. 
If you're creating a rectangular handle, you may want to taper the central part of the handle to better fit your grip, cutting it to a square section which widens at the top and bottom to prevent your hand from slipping from the middle of the handle. Cut the end at an angle such that it meets smoothly with the wood on either side. Then cut the corners off the central part of the grip, bringing the grip closer to a circular shape. Once this is done to all four corners, sand the handle smooth using either a file or heavy duty sandpaper. Test the handle as you go to ensure that it snugly fits the contours of your hand. Once you have shaped your handle, it's important to add grooves to the handle such that the lip of the bowl will not interfere with the handle sitting flat against the shield's face. To do this, line your handle up against your shield's face and carefully mark where the boss meets the handle and where the grooves need to be cut. When marking the grooves, ensure that there is enough space for both the inside and the outside edge of the bowl's lip. And take note of how deep this cut will need to be for the bowl to fit snugly. Once the grooves are cut into the handle, the handle should be able to fit flat against the shield base with the boss. Once the handle is attached, this will be all that's holding the boss in place. Once your handle is marked, use a handsaw to cut either side of the groove to the desired depth. Then using a chisel and a soft hammer, you should easily be able to remove the wood from inside the groove, creating a hole just large enough to contain the rim of the shield boss. Making this hole too wide or too deep will cause the bowl to be loose in the shield which will lead to rattling during use. Once you're happy with your handle and have ensured that it sits snugly against the shield face even when the boss is included, mark the final position of your handle and create guidelines for drilling. For our handles we included two screws on either side, one close to the boss and one close to the edge. Using a drill bit appropriate for the screws that you plan to use, pre-drill the holes through the handle and the face. Once the first hole is drilled, it is useful to pin the handle in place using a smaller drill bit with a large attachment on the other end. Simply slide the drill bit through the hole to pin the handle in place, meaning that it can only rotate around that fixed point. This will ensure that your holes line up. If doing this on your own, drill the topmost and bottommost hole of the handle first, pinning them as you go. This will mean that the central two holes can then be drilled without fear of the handle shifting. Once the holes are drilled, simply reinsert the boss and screw the handle to the face, ensuring that the screw points are on the inside and the flat heads are on the outside. Then, after the handle is attached, cut the screws or file them flush with the handle to prevent them from poking you while you're using it. At this point the shield itself is basically finished and all that remains is to attach the padding and add the final touches to make sure that it's safe to use and comfortable to use. To attach the edging to the shield, first take the garden hose, cut it to length with a little bit of overlap and slit the hose such that there is a cut along the natural curvature of the hose. This will make it easiest to put onto the shield. Secure the hose in place by either using a contact adhesive applied to the hose in the shield face or by using duct tape. After the hose is attached, a similar process is used to attach the foam. Once the edge is padded, the cloth is then used to conceal it and hold the foam in place. To do this, cut your cloth to a width great enough to easily cover across the shield's edge. First tape the front of the cloth to the shield's face making sure to leave slack so that when the cloth is dragged over to the back of the shield's face it will not stretch. Then staple the cloth along the back of the shield face to secure it in place. Finally add any finishing touches to your shield such as a string or fabric binding for your handle and also consider adding straps to make the shield easier to carry. 
For large shields, a long strap can be used to make the shield easy to carry over your shoulders, and for bucklers, a short strap can be used to hold it against the scabbard when the sword is not in use. In terms of maintenance, we've only needed to tighten loose handle bindings and occasionally knock dents out of shield bosses. Light dents can easily be removed from the inside of the shield, whereas more severe dents can be prevented by using multiple bowls or by placing foam in between the bowls before putting them into the shield. For severe damage, it is easily possible to remove the handle and replace the bowls entirely. In terms of performance, the large shields act as fantastic battlefield weapons and are also appropriate for training and for people who have little experience using these weapons. The large shields effectively close off the midline, leaving the only real targets available to an attacker being the extended sword arm or the forward leg. These shields offer great protection from archers and from pole arms and function well in shield walls. Their size can make them tiresome to use for extended periods of time and difficult to transport, and after the initial learning period they generally offer the least learning opportunity and least exciting duels. By comparison, bucklers require a much more active fighting style, relying on good footwork and blocking with the sword in order to make up for the shield's small size. In the battlefield context, bucklers offer little protection from arrows or pole arms and offer the least protection against multiple or unexpected attackers. The buckler's small size means that generally more skill and practice is required to use it effectively. More areas are open and valid targets for your opponent, but the size of your shield makes it easier to throw shots from unexpected directions. Using a buckler can be a fantastic learning tool for those who have already mastered the basics. It opens up new directions and angles of attack and defense, and requires greater precision when moving the shield to block or intercept attacks. Bucklers are also great weapons for duels, where they encourage a much more active and free-flowing fighting style. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have any feedback or questions please leave them in the comment section down below and make sure to check out my channel for future updates on this and other projects.